Let me have that tuner again. I didn't, okay. somewhere or other, I didn't get that. The string is bad on this fiddle, and Alvy says it's getting awful hard to tune. They get wild. Barbara's hooked. She's yeah. like I used to be. Yeah, she is. Go, go, go. Go where we used to. Well, look at me today drive, but this is not that big a deal here. Ruben's Ridge. Ruben's Ridge, yeah. Okay. Now, was that fast enough for Was I keeping up beating? Oh, yeah. See, I never, that's what that, I, I that's told, like a, I told Stone King one time, I said, That's not know, a real fast tune. It interests me to, you know, I'm just not a hoedown guitarist, but it always interests me on what they like to have, you know. So that the first week up there, they had they put on a fiddle contest each day, and they had uh, Pete McMahon and Amos Chase, that's Stone King's wife's uncle from mm -hmm. over in Kansas, and then they had uh, some fiddlers I didn't know from uh, one from I think Minnesota or Michigan or something I don't I didn't know this so they had like five of them, and they had the, then they'd put on a fiddle contest to show and they t had this that Appleby boy was there, that seconded you know and I don't know if they had another guitar player or not I don't know. But that's what they did the first week. So they had more jamming than we were able to do, you know. And by then, some of the volunteers had gotten a little carried away out in the halls at night down in the lobby and everything, and they'd stopped us from playing out in the lobby. Oh, yeah. Uh, which I could see that reason, because one night they, they moved us out, too. We were quiet, of course, you know. But those guitar players, I really enjoyed sitting down and playing with them. It was a lot of fun. Ah, uh, shoot, I was... Humming Adrian's hornpipe all morning while I was milking, but
I haven't played that in a long time. Well, I ain't always played that. We'll try it. It's a documentary on this uh, uh, Bascom Lamar Lunsford from North Carolina. Yeah, I got uh, we got that tape. Okay, I did too. I just wonder if you've seen. Now that uh, he went out to those dancers, those buck dancers, they call them. Yeah. Now that's what. If I get me a good, I'm going to get a good one, and it'll be uh, the thing is bad about this. I'm getting ready. The boy in Washington had a Sony mic that was just like a pencil, but it was also a stereo and did everything this one do. This intimidates people. Say, you and I are used well, to it, but I, you can intimidate somebody that isn't used to it. And, you want uh, some powder? No, thank you. I'm fine. But I'd like to to get some of these jig dancers sometime. Yeah, get, you need to. Get them to. on fast speed so you can slow it down someday. I may never do anything with it, but someday somebody will. But we need to get that down like, oh, uh, the Delphs and uh, <laughs> people like that. And the uh, uh, Schulers, of course, still do pretty good. Well, let's do a couple that we know, okay. like, like Fort Smith.
fun. I just wish I could do it more. I really do. Love it. You know, that's something you can do, and you can really wear yourself out. Oh God! Damn. And they're softened wet, and the sweat, but you feel good. It's like <laughs> yeah. working out, like when I go to the Y sometimes yeah. and play basketball. So you, but you feel good after you do it, you know. But of course, what's embarrassing? Many a time, I've been standing there gasping. And this is the truth. I've been gasping, for, and I've been dancing with maybe a 75-year-old woman. <laughs> and they're, wait, they're ready to go again. Yeah. But see, I'm working at it, and they know just how they to, just, they just glide through it. Go see? right through it. They, that's always amazing. We got that one little old short lady, she must be up in her 80s. Yep. And yep. boy, she can, know just, the one you and, mean. and she don't loaf through there. No, She's I, a dancer. I know the one you mean. That's one of them I'm thinking of. Now, that's <laughs> one of them I'm thinking of. I think one time down here in the basement over there, she was one I was dancing with, and uh, I thought I was going to die before it's over with, because you went extra long because you had a bunch of sets out, you know. And I mean, she was just sitting there ready, just not even breathing hard, you know. But I know the one you mean. I tell you, the, the one I like to dance to the best, I talk about the devil's instrument, the one that riles me up is that uh, Wolves Island. That's a good one. That's a good thing. Barbara said she woke up this morning thinking had wolves howling on her mind. <laughs> you know what I dreamed? <laughs> this, this is terrible how we are. I dreamed about a fiddle contest last night, and I was there, <laughs> and I was going to second. Stone King, I think, was there, and I was worried about being able to do it right, you know, and everything, and then somebody else uh, wanted me to second them, and, it, and it, they both were playing at the same time or something, you know, and it was one big mess. Of course, never did do anything, you know, how those dreams are. It's just all yeah. confusion. You know. I, I have but, you know, I've gone to bed many times tapping my feet when we've been to Tahlequah or something, but after uh, 10 hours of music, you know. Played that the other night, yeah. yeah. Thank you. 
changes types of tune in there, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It goes from kind of a hornpipe and then into kind of a rag in a way. That's always, I always thought that was an unusual tune. But that's a good tune. That's a good tune. Yeah. Well, uh, now Cyril played, Cyril just played two, three parts of that. Uh, I got that other part. James Bryan plays the other part. He plays the, he put this, he puts that, this part in. part I was talking about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, Cyril puts that in. Put that this, in this is the part that uh, he didn't. Okay. That's the part Cyril don't put in. And of course, James Bryan called it shortening bread because yeah. of that one little thing, but now Cyril put that, that part was in his. Uh, Arthur Smith played one similar to that, except this one, it, this goes to, I don't, I don't know, I don't think Alvin Hart has ever decided whether it's C or E minor. I think it, I really think it's probably C. It just starts off like that. Uh, North Carolina Breakdown, you may know it. Yeah, uh, you played it one time, I remember, but I, I don't know it. Uh, but I, I remember it. Yeah. Throws it into a different. Yeah, that's and more of a rag type or a dance. It's type thing. Uh, it's actually good. it's on the fiddle. It's C. Yeah, I'm well, making C, C notes. Fine. Yeah, C sounded good to me. Yeah. I didn't E minor one time. It just so that's a that's didn't sound right. That's changing the type of the tune even by putting that yeah. minor. In. That's what I I told them it was C. They yeah, wanted C's. to put E minor in. It. Well, I think C fits. I believe that I believe it's a C. Get away with it, Why wasn't I buying his paintings when he first started? Yeah. When you could get them for like $100 or something now. That's the kind I read. Now that, um, oh, down here it has the pipe factory. Yeah, Ralph Brown. Uh, Ralph Brown said that farm's on the back of their place, that farm right there. He was telling me one time, he said, but come down there sometime when he doesn't anything to drive back, said it's still there. This is what well, it's been a number of years ago. That Johnson family or something, he told me who they were. I forgot oh, what the name was. Right. Whatever the name was, I can't remember. Thomas. Thomas, that was it, yeah. I played with uh, one of them boys, and I knew one of the other, the younger ones. Newell, Newell yeah. Thomas lived down at Romance. He, he yeah. owns the old Romance store. Oh, yeah. Building and yeah. schoolhouse. 
Were they having some dances there at one time or something? No, they, they had music they, parties. Me, well, I mean, that's what it was, music parties. Yeah, talking about that. still do, I think. Yeah. Here, shut your thing off here a minute. Johnny, won't you love me? And so on. Yeah. I don't remember what yeah. the word was, but it was, that's what he called it was Johnny, won't you love me? Huh. And it's Rochester. Mm -hmm. Now, do I play that in D? Shot -ish, I think too, but it's Rochester's. Yeah, it's the old Rochester shot. And then there's a the Jenny Lynn shot I can think of once in a while. That's yeah. a fairly common shot. I've taped that too somewhere, I think. I can't <laughs> it's uh I think I would have to follow maybe. But it's a it's a nice choice. And it's a it's a fairly common one. It, but that's about the only two yeah. choices that I really a lot of used to play one called Tennis from Home in yeah, C. Tennis from Home. But that's, now it didn't that takes some time to learn that one because it had three well, or I, four parts. It had to three it. parts to three it. Parts. I used to I don't know whether it was in C or whether it was in G and went to C, I yeah, believe. I think it, it is, yeah. Been. Now he learned that. There was a I used to play it. I could get off on that every time. Well, that's another maybe I'll think of after a while. You know, that, he learned that there was a program on, in St. Joe, there was a, a program before he went on that that was their theme song, that tune's from home. And that's where he learned it. Or whoever it was he didn't. I've, I've taped that. Somebody else has played I'd, that. I believe Bob Warner played it. Too. He may have had it. I think he did. Yeah. Seemed like I've seen a, a Hammer Serial one. Seems like I've heard a tape of them doing it. I can't start that one. I haven't played it for years, but I used to play it pretty regularly. Back when Lonnie was my big source on the radio, you know. Yeah, yeah. It starts out a little bit like the Dixie Blossom. It kind of seems like I try to get off on it every time I. Yeah. Now I can't get it. 
about. Did you fool any with Rutland's reel, any? Yeah, I went run over it yesterday and then just a little, a couple of times. I don't now, know. Of course, my, this second thing I learned, I played with those Shaw boys from Nebraska, so I don't know. Now, listen. It worked with, uh, my seconding worked with, uh, oh, that Lacey Hartsky out there at Republic. Well, it worked with him. Well, I think. Uh, this, well, I don't know. This version I've learned, I learned it from Baker. Well, that's where the Shaw Boys got it, I'm sure. And uh, now Baker, if my ear don't fool me, don't go down the fourth position like Howdy Forster did. Yeah, I don't and, uh, oh, art student. Uh, oh, Bertoldi. Bertoldi. Now, he yeah. goes down in the fourth position here. But the best I can hear it, I can't hear Baker get away from this up here. It, it, I believe, and it sounds just as good to me. Well, I don't care much about that. It's, it's got one, two, three, it's got about five parts to it, and they repeat it. Well, there's one part in there that I <coughs> that I'm not getting quite right. Is this? I, I forgot. I can't get that nailed down. I'll, let's let's play it again. I'll put a little of it on here and see where all I'm messing up.
Well, I'll, I'll yeah. iron that other, iron that out and play it a little now. I just, I had quit. I hadn't played it the last time I played it was down in Mountain You'll View. You'll find many people can second, I don't imagine. No, I just, <laughs> it's a they thing. just throw up their hands and then run backwards and it yeah, tears up the party, as you know. As it can be. So I just, I just put them. I like, I like those tunes because they're kind of a challenge sometimes. They kind of. What's your, what's your dad's tuny whistle there? That was in C, wasn't it? No, it's D. It, no. God, it's a D minor and F and F. 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 A lot of D minor. I, my, my problem with that one was to know when to hit the D minor because it's suddenly you're in it, you know. Uh, well, I think it probably starts First thought. It's nearly all just, yeah, just, just a little bit of F on there. And that's the only two chords anyway. It's got a little B flat. It's got a little B flat in, <laughs> in, in C7. <laughs> but then you come back, you come back to the D minor right away. See, just real quick. You don't have to have it. But that B flat can go in there. But you could skip them. I mean, you could just, you could really just F and D minor yeah. the thing. Yeah. But you actually know what these tunes really are. All these local names for them. Like, well, I don't, no name for them. I don't even know the name of that. I know. That's what I mean. It'd be interesting to know what they really. They're probably songs. A lot of what them, that what reminded me of that. I I hadn't thought of it for years, and I don't know if I ever even played it or not. But uh, I got a tape of Gary Harrison. And Gary plays that tune on there, and he just plays it raw fiddle, no guitar mm -hmm. at all. And boy, the first two notes I heard of that tune, me, that's me and Patty was going to Springfield, and I'd put that. Who's this guy? Gary Harrison. You remember oh. Gary Harrison? The no, I don't know. Oh, he's from over in Eastern Illinois. He used to come over to St. Louis. Uh, the, uh, had at the that, festivals? Yeah, had that swamp band. Uh, Chirp Smith oh, played yeah. Madeline oh, okay. for him. okay, I know what you mean now. And yeah. he, he collected all these Illinois tunes, yeah. seeing Chirp and all of these guys, and Allen Street and yeah. everybody is yeah, still recording played. the tunes yeah. he collected. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I you about But now uh, he played that tune, and it, it, it's note for note like my dad whistled it. Just huh. exactly. I knew the tune instantly, just as soon as I heard it. I, I come, huh. I just yeah. come home and played it. Because I just hadn't, I just hadn't thought of it. But I've seen my dad start out the path or start someplace and whistle that tune a thousand times. Well, if 
over there we might put the... We might put the gar... Uh, uh, whatever that marsh is that I'm trying to think of. John Brett? Not John Brett. Oh, that marsh that oh. James Bryan's or, or uh, Norman Blake's. Kennedy Rag, Kennedy Rag. Got you half, isn't it? Yeah.
took me a minute to remember where they <laughs> the go around was on it. That's a good old, that's a good old ride. Half and be flat, you won't play much around in this part of the country. No, I, I'm just not. <laughs> well, I'm, just I'm not off, used to they? playing it with a guitar, you know. And I just kind of sit around here and play it by myself. So. But uh, they <laughs> just, throws. you know, well, I mean, a long time ago, I used to uh, with Melvin and some of them. I'd say, now Melvin, if you want to, and Billy Logan. I'd say, now Melvin, the A minor goes in there, and I thought, you know, and then the next time around. You know the old timer, even they're starting on the, to, They're starting to do it, though, but, you know. But they, even on Doc Roberts. Uh, well, on they Doc, probably left it out, didn't they? Huh? Did they leave it out or put it in? Shoot, yeah, he just played, he's played yeah, yeah. straight C and F. And yeah. Gee, there was no A minor in yeah. that, uh, yeah. his guitar man, and yeah. he had a whale of a guitar yeah. man. But you know Lonnie now didn't Did like Did you ever listen to any of his fiddling? Oh, I had, his yeah. His tape? Now, Lonnie didn't like minors at all at first when I first started playing with him. And then towards the last there, he started saying, well, let's try putting some of those in there. But you know, nobody ever did. That's why. Nobody just ever did it. And, of course, there's, there you can get around some that put too much in them, too, you know. That can be done, too. You can yeah, over, you, you can, can, you can overdo. Too. You can sure yeah. do that. But that, uh, I just love that uh, coming of blues. Uh, now, that's the one that's got that crooked, got one off chord in there, a C got sharp. A C -sharp. And I know where I forgot where. Well, it's just like you'd imagine. It's just a uh, one step down from C. That's not it. Well, that's just, I mean. See, I don't know these chords on these things. I, don't, I play them, and I, a lot of times don't know even what they are. Hit a C sharp on there on your. <laughs> to C sharp and then back to F, just in one place. I can't remember where Harley gets it, but it, and it's not a fast tune. Oh, did you catch uh, Kenny Baker on that? Mm -hmm. Uh, my sound was terrible on my set. Well, it wasn't your yeah. set. That was the auditorium. Everybody's sound was like yeah. just the way yeah. it was every, echoing. Every, every, it was like echoing. That. Yeah, it just had a mm. uh, kind of. A, I'm going to write Joe Wilson and I find out if there's a tape available of that. Although, really, it, it was a variety of st styles, but Kenny Baker was the only thing I really was. Uh, well, I, Michael Doucet was on Austin City Limits night four last. Yeah. But he played, he didn't, see, he's so far out on some of this stuff now from when I first used to hear him. Oh, yeah. That he's all this progressive, you know. Yeah, he's, uh, he's got a way from Yeah, that, but I, they played some of their old tunes on this Austin City Limits. Work, let's work on, we'll go through that a time or two and see if you
most of it, couldn't I? That's, that's that B flat seventh. That's that isn't it. No, it's an off note there. That's a minor. I just can't remember. Oh well, that's, I'll have Alvy show me. He showed me one time, and I've forgotten that night up there at his house. I can't remember where it is. How about new money? Do you know that? New money. You played it the other night, but uh, let's play it again. Then. What's it in C or? Yeah. She seconds herself perfectly, you know, you when she plays. She really you. is. In fact, I don't even, I, try, I play real soft on a second because, you know, if I try to make a run, that's the trouble. You get too many guitars trying yeah. to make runs. Nobody makes them the same way. And hers, I'll just let her make all the runs because she hits them just right. Yeah, she does. She does a good job. I haven't played a wall shed. What's, let's see. What, what were we playing the other night? What were some of them we were playing? Play what? Anniversary? I hadn't played that in yeah. years and years. Uh, Is that in G and D or what was D. it? D. D and, G. D and G, yeah. I that in if I can, if I can get the, I may not get the continuity. I may not get it exactly right. But I don't play it often enough.
I've got to brush up on that. I do too. Right? That D part, I was missing it. Well, I, I wasn't leading you into I wasn't leading you into that G part ride either in several right. other What's places. There's, 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 that was missing something on my. Uh, that little bit waltz uh, I told you the other night I called it Barbara's waltz. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the flying Indian waltz is what it is. It's a, oh, yeah, it, what, it, it's, a, it it's an old, old Appalachian waltz. It's a good boy. It's, it's a really a good boy. I like it. It's simple and it's got that old time, got the waltz Say, beat. We were on stage up there. Of course, you can imagine the mixed bag of dancers. Now, they've got people up there in Washington that go to dance clubs. Mm -hmm. And there's one big old park, it's a national park now, it used to be an amusement park. And the first hour on certain nights is instruction and the second hour is dancing. So you got all these retired and there was a Filipino lady, we, they were in those pictures. And then there was some real prissy little men. I mean, they were almost like this. One had little black curls, you know, I guess he was Jewish or something. And, but what they do is they will come to these festivals like this and they'll bring their dancing clothes with them and they'll get in those porta johns and change clothes because it's so hot to And then they'll dance every dance, and they dance shot at shoes and everything. But one time, we had about eight or nine couples waltzing. And usually, you know, it's just, and all of a sudden, they got into a circle, and it was like they were on ice skates. And I mean, they were, it was the prettiest thing. I never saw a mixed crowd do that. And I told them when we were through, I said, well, I wish I'd have had a video of this, because it's the only time I can ever remember us playing for a mixed group of people that you look like you were in a movie musical. But they were all just twirling and doing the dance right around, just like they were on a, a choreograph, <laughs> like it had been choreographed, you know. But you don't see that very often. No. Usually it's a real mixed bag of people, but it was really pretty. What's this in? This? Uh, D. Got a little extra beat in there on something, a little different. 
It sounds like an extra beat, but I think it'll count. Well, it, yeah, I think it it's counts out on yeah, this. Oh, well, yeah, it came out right once I got it. It's a little different right in that second yeah, part though. I counted that sucker because oh, I thought it, I thought it, I thought it was uh, out of had a long yeah. well, measure. You have that one little beat in D and then back to the A. See? Yeah, it, but it it counts out you, four the, beats. You hit a little whatever the note is. I mean, yeah. kind of double the note. And that, that, it, that's it. That's a pretty waltz though. Gives it an unusual sound. Yeah, it does. But it's uh, now you know waltzes is played all the way from a hundred and two or 104 beats a minute to 128, yeah, 30. Yeah, different speeds of waltzes. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the different waltzes, you have to play a different yeah. speed because, and I've tried it, what little waltz and I know, and that, that waltz has to move right along yeah. for you to get your yep. uh, steps in right. Yeah. And But now there's some of them, now the anniversary waltz is a slow waltz. Slow waltz it's yeah. it's got to be played slow. There's a lot of difference in them sucker. That's yeah. that's when you take uh, twenty some beats a minute. That that makes a lot of difference in the speed of it. Here. Yeah. Yeah. I've been working on one. I haven't got it near perfected, but I, and the one reason I haven't is because I don't have a. Well, I ain't got a second perfected yet. <laughs> that's, that's the name of Memory. You oh, probably, yeah. you probably yeah, done. I have, to, I have to remember now. There's, there's a memories and an old memories wall. Well, this is a just straight memories yeah, wall. Mean, one of them got an e. And I can't get through it hardly, but. Well, let's but. see if I can even remember it now, wouldn't you? Some people have played it. Joe Meadows, uh, I got it with Joe Meadows, and that that darn Buddy Griffin that was down there at that fiddle contest is a playing banjo with Joe Meadows, 
And uh, on this last Staffer album, he's playing uh, bass. He's playing bass with Art Stamper. That son of a bitch can play anything. <laughs> and uh, we nice we let him get away with a with a fiddle contest just simply because, to my ear, he was the best fiddler down there. And I bet that sucker can play now. Now, which contest was this? This down at Branson, you remember? Oh, last year. Mm -hmm. You heard he it. the guy? Let's see. Now, what was he playing last uh, year? He's the Buddy Griffin. He's the one I told you that worked over at uh, Oh yeah. Christie okay. Lane's. Yeah. No wonder he works over oh, Christie Lane's. He wonder. can play. I never did find him in Springfield. He can play everything over there. I never did find him. In, we visited with him after the contest. He's was an old professional, sort of. Yeah. From Ohio or somewhere. Yeah, right? from West, West Virginia, or somewhere. North right? Carolina. Yeah. Okay. Because I tried to get hold of him in Springfield and, and never could. And then some, you, or you or somebody said, well, he's playing down on the strip. Well, now he's... Christy Lane, that's who... He's, uh, he's played with... He's recorded with fellows like Joe Meadows, and he plays a whale of a bluegrass banjo, and I bet he plays a drop-thumb banjo, too. Huh. Yeah. And he plays... And he, yeah, that's the guy I never did get hold of him. And on uh, Art Stamper's record, he's playing bass. In that contest, he played... Didn't he play Soldier's Joy or Liberty? He played, he played he play Liberty. Really, played Liberty and didn't play anything really. Uh, no, he played the fire out and played him yeah, old time. Yeah, I mean, he time. played old yeah. time fiddle. Because we were all talking, my gosh, you know, who is that guy? You know, with all these other contests, it was like Junior Merritt lost, you know, and everything. Yeah. And, uh, and this guy, this upstart, came in. And <laughs> well, I, I found out why later on. I'll be there. Maybe we can still get hold of him sometime. And get well, together. he wouldn't. He wouldn't stoop to playing with the likes. Oh, of yes, he would because he came up to Art. He he was familiar with Art's records, and he said, "Well, I'm living in Springfield." He said, "Sometime give me a ring." He said, "I live out on uh, one of those roads out there going to Kearney Street. I don't remember which road it was, but." Um, and I looked and everything, and never did even find him in the phone book. So he didn't even have his own phone. He was living with some, staying with somebody. And then next thing you know, he wasn't in town anymore. And so he, that's when he'd gone down evidently and was started playing down there, see. No, he, he said he'd like to get together and play something. Well, he can play anything, I, I'd say. Well, I'll be that. But if I can get, if if you work that out. Well, that memory is. Oh, I'll tell you what, it'll just take a minute to put it on that. Let me have your tape. Just take it out and I'll put it right on that one. Okay. And then you'll have it right where you can practice it.
all yeah. kind of stuff on there. That Griffin just playing the fire out of that I band. Used to do a line rock, and Lonnie plays that a lot. Did you play line rock? No, I never. It, can't. It, it took me a while to learn the thing. It had three or four parts. To it. Then Herman Johnson played it. A lot of these young ones play it, you know. That's, that's too I don't, I don't, too wild for me. It is. C and an A minor goes right in at the tail end of that C. <laughs> and then where do you go from that then? Okay, let's go that first part there. In the in the just start from the very first. D7, doo, 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 doo. and you can rock back and forth with D7 and A minor, and then you go to, a, that's where you're going back into that, but then you're hitting a note right well, after that. Well, that, that chord gets it right there, that, uh, whatever you made, whatever D, made D minor it. or whatever that no, was. No, it's uh, it diminished. But that's then a, you're going, you're hitting another note, and let's go through that first part again. That's a that's a uh, B. Uh, that's a B flat and a B sliding in from B flat to a B note on the fiddle. B flat sliding. I don't know what B flat is on there, but but that that uh, diminishes. Yeah, that's what that was. Yeah, that was a good one. That was a good one. Probably could uh, instead of hitting a chord, you could probably just hit a single note. Or we'll see if that's running through is that. Is that one part? Again? Straight back to 
let's do the first part again. I think we got the first part down. Okay. <laughs> I'm making a C note or C chord here, but it may be a D on there. I don't know. No. It's, I think I, I can stay in D. I think we're still close enough. Okay, I see that second part. Can you start in the second part again? Yeah. tune is you're slipping that E flat in before you come back your G and then go your your go around I call it which well, is now then you know answer. there's this other little thing yeah there. we hadn't got to that <laughs> <laughs> we're still on the first two parts here that's it but that's, that's it yeah well that's a pretty tune that is oh I thought <laughs> That part now. Yeah. Now, if I go to this G, and I believe that's the end, and way I believe on uh, on this coming up to this middle part, I believe he does that. Uh, uh,
sometimes I just go blank right in the middle of it. something though there's one part though he's going back into something else instead of straight to G no. well anyway there's another note goes in there too that's two or three notes still go in there but but we got the bulk of it down well, yeah. the bass part of it down yeah, pretty much. yeah the only difference I just get to where I can smooth it up. <laughs> well, and the same here too. That's... Now this is what I like to do. I it like took to me a week. Things. It took. about three, four beats, right in the last measure of each part, they'll run the chords back. Yeah. And that's the only two strings in them anywhere. And now they play them straight through all the way. Yeah. Two strings. Good night, good night. That's in C. Yeah. And then it goes to Oh, F. I know, I remember now. You play it, let's play it. C again. goes to F. Well, the old timers just, I'll just that's play right. it straight through.
I didn't let it either. I've got so many tunes anymore that before I'm going to play a tune, I have to brush up on them. I just, I, I've got... Well, I can't, I'm told you, you know, some guy can, more than once some guys walked off stage or something and I said, boy, that was a good tune, what was it? And it's Soldier's Joy or Liberty or something. And you know, <laughs> my mind goes blank. My mind, well, I've got tapes where I'm transcribing them and I've got, I know it, you know, but I can't remember what the name of the tune was. And later on, when I go back through, I'll remember what it was, and it was something I hear all the time. But there's so many of them, I, just, I don't see how you keep them straight. I really don't. Because all I got to do is second them, you know. But to remember well, the I've melody got, of the I've names. got so many tunes now that I can't make it around and play them every once in a while. Yeah. Sometimes I go for ages, yeah. you know, without playing a tune, and, and then I have to, I need well, to that's, go. That's, that's two-thirds of art right there. And what, sometimes what we used to do is just sit and go down the list. I mean, we'd jog back and forth between waltzes and shotties and all. But that's the only way you can remember them, you know. Yeah. And now we don't play like we used to, and I catch myself almost missing stuff or something, you know, because I don't care how long you played or anything, if you don't practice, you're going to get a little rusty on some yeah, of these things. Sure. You just, nobody, nobody's that good. You just got to practice. Listen, anytime you're getting tired, just yell here. Oh, right? I'm fine. We always stop meeting when we get ready. Everybody gets ready for the evening. I don't, I don't get tired. I, I practice it. I do this all the time. This. Not the whole day, so I'm not worried. I'm bad. <laughs> I was always going to come down. One guy, I wanted to sit down without a big, that's why I wanted to do this, without 50 other people around and everything, just to sit here. It was Paul Jones. I wanted to get down there and sit down with him sometime, because every time I've been around, there was, everybody was around, you know. Yeah. And he was, he had a, well, all those Joneses have a unique style. Paul was the best. Federal, but Paul way, really, yeah. Uh, yeah. and I was always sorry. And of course, no problem. He said, "Come any time," and I yeah. just never got around to it, you know. But he and Alton and, and Tilford have a that slide they put in their music. Yeah. Yeah, I've never heard anybody else around here do that. It's just distinctive. You Boy, can, that that saddle old Kate is a good tune. Yeah, yeah. But uh, what was it? Paul's was his milk cow blues, or is that Alton's? Yeah, uh, his was milk cow, and Alton's is. Uh, Oh, well, I don't remember just which one one, played would, which. one would never play the one other one. played the too. sharecroppers. Sharecroppers, and, that's what I'm trying to think of. Sharecroppers. And, and one played the milk, milk cow. cow. But yeah. Alton will play both of them. But now there's still a lot of Paul's song, tunes that he won't play. Yeah, isn't that something? I finally <laughs> got him to play that Goodbye My Honey's Gone. Yeah, that's but right. he didn't I've got that to. quite a bit by Paul playing that, yeah. But Paul was a good musician. He was good second. Fine. Oh, nice fellow. Did you ever? They no, used to, I never. They used to play some team tunes in E flat. Oh, mostly you, religious stuff, wasn't it? You I mean, can, but it, you can uh, you can play stuff there to, to get a two string mm -hmm. that you uh, that would just be simple somewhere else. Maybe yeah. just a single string, a few notes. You can put it there, and it just automatically two string. Yeah. It's easy to two string. Now Pete does a lot of that. He'll yeah. he'll move stuff that ought to be played in D. He'll move it to E flat. To get the oh, I see, yeah. To get the harmony, two strings, yeah. the harmony. So. It'd be it, it no problem. You don't know. I mean, you didn't play any tunes that were I, in B flat, uh -uh. E flat. I mean, Art said he used to play a few that were mostly out of hymnals that were religious tunes, and he well, said the reason they played those. They didn't have guitar players that played E flat, but they had pianos or these pop organs that played in E flat. Stuff like that. That's what I was saying one time. That's not the only one. And that's because they had an organ or a piano player that would come. And they were written, and uh, a lot of them was, yeah. was wrote. And... Yeah. No, I didn't. and of course, I know you never had any seconds yeah. to do any of that stuff anyway. So. Any 
Jim Johnson plays quite a few in E flat. Surprised me one time we were somewhere and he played a whole bunch in E flat. Really? Yeah. Don't play a whole heard. bunch, three or four tunes. I've you know, never heard him play. More than I ever. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard him playing in E flat. I've got to get that uh, album that I was telling Barb this morning to borrow. I know Fred's got it. If she get it off of Fred and tape it off, it's got Denver Bell and a bunch oh, of them good. Kenny ones. Baker played that Denver. Yeah. That's the only thing I really recognize. That's a good tune. I like it. Yeah. And I, I've not got a copy of it, so I don't know. I just kind of, I've heard it two or three times, and I'm just kind of going on. I've kind of. Dean Johnson plays where I learned it. I got the basic yeah, framework of yeah, it, but yeah. I'm sure there's some notes in there that I'm not. Well, that sounded like to me. That I'm not getting. Mm -hmm. Sounded like to me. Well, it sounded the way. Oh, when I played it with Dean Johnson, it sounded like he plays it, so that's. <laughs> Baker's got a lot of little notes in there. Yeah. I don't like to learn his tunes or, or hardly any tunes. If I can get a original recording, even it's one of those old skillet liquors yeah. or something, yeah. I like to learn it from the from them because everybody's so bad to put their own. They want to. They. Ah, I don't copy after anybody else. I, hell, I'd be tickled to death to copy <laughs> after them fellas. But uh, I figure they've got the tune worked out about as good as you can get it. And I play it about as close to them as I can play it, and it's gonna it's gonna sound like me playing it anyway. That's what start saying. I mean, the difference how much you try to go exactly right. You know, that's one thing now that keep me dead. I'm not. Yeah, I've heard it. It's no low. It's one of the four tunes that Low Stokes recorded by himself. He was the best fiddler, you know, in the skillet liquor yeah. bunch, or I thought he was. Yeah. It's C and A minor. And I haven't played it for a while.
reminds me of what Jim plays a lot of those tunes that they've learned from those groups like the Skittle Lickers and yeah. Well, Jim Skittle Jim plays you know. that tune, but he yeah. don't do it. He no, don't but play I mean that style. The same that. version. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's got a different, little yeah. different version. And uh, Low Stokes was two string in that, and Jim don't. He, he was supposed to buy me a tape, and I know he forgot it, but I'm going to still get it. Some guy recorded uh, Missouri Rags. In other words, ragtime music written by Missourians. Dill Pickles on there, and a bunch of those. And Percy Winry, Dixie, I think, I don't know if Dixie Blossom's on there, but some stuff. And I wanted to get that tape, and, and I think it's fiddle, I'm pretty sure it's fiddle music. I know it is. It's fiddle music. A Devil's Box is where I saw the review of it. Hmm. But it's all Missouri writers, all Missouri composers. And uh, the guy that lived in California is where you're supposed to order it, but he's moved back to St. Louis, Jim said. So I, I'm, I'm going to get hold of Jim. I know I forgot to get it for him. And he said the Skell Lickers have got another tape out now that I, he's supposed to get me too. They've got their second tape out. They're a wild bunch. You've heard of them, haven't you? Who? I mean... Uh, What's the group he's in? Skirt lifters. Skirt lifters. Skirt lifters, yeah, not skill lifters. Oh, yeah. I'm a... <laughs> uh, what do you think of that Chirp Smith tape? Oh, good stuff on there. It, it's it's that stuff. You know, yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I can recognize it. But he, he plays a little more southern style than uh, yeah. than some of them do. He's got a little more southern. He's got a little more roll. He's got a few of the more of the corners knocked off than, than yeah. some of them have. But uh, that old boy that recorded that done a whale of a job. But that sounds I, good. Yeah, it sounds good to me. He got Mary a banjo Mike. player on there, doesn't he? Yeah, well, he's got two or three oh, different, different ones. Yeah, yeah I, I listened good. to it on the way down the first time. I really had a chance to listen got to it. Got a good banjo, yeah. really good banjo yeah. picker on there. Well, I played two years ago up here at Bethel. He was there. And I played with him one day for a while and uh, really enjoyed playing with him. But yeah, I didn't get a tape side. of it. But I didn't get a tape of it. So oh. And uh, I, asked, I didn't get I the asked jam with him. I, they had me do something. They said, "Would you go over and fill in on this?" And I said, "Fine." And so then afterwards, I asked Julie, which yeah. never follows through on anything. I said, "I would really like to have a tape of, of Church playing here." I said, "I didn't have my recorder, and it must have been 200 degrees in that little community building across the street, you know." And I never, of course, they never do come through with those, you know. I I didn't I get to jam there. with him up Bethel. I visited with him quite a bit, but we didn't get to jam. They was a there. world of fun. Yeah, well, really... well, Lord, see. You went, didn't you go every year too? Mm -hmm. We did too. You went one more year than we did then, because you were. No, there. I didn't go the first uh, year. That was our first year, both our first. Well, I, yeah, years. That so we, we went, went from '78 until about '82 81. or '81, whenever they had the yeah. last one. Yeah, and the last one they had was out in Chesterfield. No, I didn't go to that. Okay, one. well, I mean, it was a, it, it never was like, of course, it was down at the Arch, but the one, how many times did we go at the Arch? Four times. Yeah. Four yeah, years. That's, that's what I was there. That's, I remember when we stayed out that Bel Air East is when I really got to know D.L. Menard. What a character. Yeah, he is. <laughs> I already really like that. I may just... Uh...
there's something in that. Now if I'm not getting over that hardly enough for you to tell what I'm doing. But I haven't been over that very many times. Well, you, know, you do that, there's and, another note in there. And I'll have to... Different 
versions of that. I've just been a fool oh, with it for a little while, and I can't see what Pete says here. I'll have to go over to okay. for him every evening to do it. G waltzes. When you go up the D, it, it works on a lot of them. You can rock back and forth between A minor and D. And then you come to this, that diminished, and it works right in on a whole bunch of waltzes. Sounds real good. I, you know, I, I know a lot of times I'm hanging in one chord when I should be, but I just don't know what they are. I always wish I could be around some guy that knew all this stuff to show, not too much, but there's places you feel something goes. Yeah. I, uh, not good night waltz. Um, there's another waltz, Georgia, Georgiana Moon. Oh. It's got a bunch of chords in there, and I nobody I've ever been around has told me what they. It's are. an awful lot like uh, anniversary waltz. Yeah. Georgiana Moon. There's stuff goes in there that it I don't really, know. It is really. It is really made. Or, like it's really Hurtin made on say, the uh, framework. I'm going to learn that Georgia. Huh? I'm going to learn that Georgia animal. That's a pretty wall. I've it's got a, a real pretty I've wall. got a copy of it from over high T. <laughs> well, I'd like to find some printed version of it where they show guitar chords sometime, and uh, see what those are because there's some uh, augmented or demented. I don't even know what those things. Howie's are. the only one I know of that plays it. Who? Howie Teague. Yeah. Art. Let's see. Art plays it. Georgiana. Mm -hmm. I think didn't see. Uh -uh. What's it in? It's in uh, D or G, D. Maybe it's D. Yeah. Maybe it is D. Then. D. Start it. Just start. I can't. Start. I can't start. I can't remember now, but I know there's one but, of those waltzes that a lot it, of guys play, especially in Oklahoma, play it. And uh, there's chords going there. Yeah, it's got a lot of chords. It's got a lot of stuff. It's got a lot of damn fiddle uh, embellishments. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Old Howie does a whale of a job playing 
I thought yeah. you, you, Last got time I, you oh, ain't got yeah, his I've record? Got, yeah, oh yeah, I've got it. Last well, time I saw him, he had really... Yeah, how he's hey, failing. Yeah. I uh, told Alvy, he asked him if he'd talked to the Dowdens lately. That's right, because they're with him a lot, aren't they? Yeah. And uh, he said, yeah, he said, they want to get together. And I said, well, you call them and tell them to get Howie over to their house and we'll meet him. Because I want to I want to tape something else to him because he ain't going to be yeah. playing them very much. Well. I saw him at Mountain View with the Dowdens. Yeah, that that's the last time, time I, I saw him. That's the last time I seen him. And he had really changed. Yeah, he had failed yeah. a lot. I tell you another one I haven't seen, and I was always going to go to Kansas City and play with him was Lyman Dillo, and I and I were good friends. And he always told me, he said, "Come up sometime, we'll just sit down." Old Lyman was a those. fine fiddler. That his old man. Help. Of course, gosh, he's, eight, he's arts age or older. Huh? He's arts age or older. See. Oh, he's older than arts. Yeah, and uh, yeah, he was. He was 80. supposed to go on this deal. I was telling yeah. you about the first week at the Smithsonian when they had the fiddle contest, but he couldn't go, so his help is. Uh, Lyman is about 86 now or seven yeah. because he was 83 three or four years ago. Oh, he played a lot of good stuff. God. He played, he played a smooth style now. He, he was, yeah. he was great. Well, let's play one more and then I'm gonna, I'll get out of here by two o'clock and that'll give you time to rest and he'll be home by 3.30 then. Uh, Oh, you did turn it on. It's not, it's nice I forgot there, about it. I know there is out there, but it gets hot in here. Uh, I think about it. I tell you, 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 can, you keep playing these tunes I've never heard you play before. And I can't remember the names of them then. What was that Lafayette you were playing the other Oh, that's, a, that's an old Arthur Smith tune. A rare one. I mean, you don't yeah. hear it hardly ever. Was it C or what was it? D. D. I've got another one of his in D that I'd like for you to hear yeah, too. Oh yeah, throw them, throw them in, shoot. That's good. They're good. Thank <laughs> you. 
Huh? A lot of notes in that. A lot of notes in that. Yeah. It's a good, well, good tune, but I don't know the name of it. I've not been able to find out. But I know it's Arthur Smith yeah. tune. I've got his recording of it, but I ain't got a name on the tape. There's one of those flea markets in town that down in the basement has thousands of records, and they're ridiculous prices. Ten dollars, two, you know, old 78s and stuff, which is ridiculous. But there's a bunch <laughs> of old, uh, not Arthur Smith, but that era, you know, a lot of, uh, I don't remember, but there's some skeleton records I saw and all that, and somebody told me if I called up the old gal that owned them and told her I'd take a hundred of them at a quarter a piece or something, she might just do it. Well, Dale Reed told me that, as that uh, st uh, program over at Monette, you know, on Saturday mornings. You ever get that? No, what? Uh, country Recollections or something it's called. Oh, it, 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 all old time music. Uh, Skill Lickers and all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. And yeah, it's the best old time. Better than Barefoot Bob. He plays ten times the tunes. Tillman and all his band there for you, going back to, uh, what was that date on that deal? I think it was, uh, when was it here? West Virginia Waltz. December 29, 1947 for that uh, particular recording there on Country Recollections. And uh, the time right now is 29 minutes past 11 o'clock and 67 degrees, and that time and temperature is courtesy of A2Z Glass Weld. Or you can save yourself a bundle on auto glass costs, and uh, you want to check with them before you replace that windshield. It can probably be repaired. Insurance companies just love it, and they will even waive your deductible. For more information, you can call 235-8878 or 1-800-748-0626 and find out all the details about it there. Sure enough, there was a group uh, in the 30s known as the Three Tobacco Tags. They were out of West Virginia, North Carolina, down in that vicinity. And they recorded a number called The Man Who Wrote Home Sweet Home Never Was a Married Man. So we're going to do it for you. Go back to 1938 for this recording. <laughs> Early in the morning, leaves his wife in bed. He lies that tell the kids wake up, get up and cook some bread. Now let me tell you a thing or two that a wife like that won't never do. And the man that wrote that home sweet home never was a married man. He never had that loving wife to greet him with a frying pan. To meet him at the door as the ghost come in, knock him down with a rolling pin. And the man that wrote that home sweet home never was a married man. comes in at dinner time, hungry and he wants to eat. Finds his wife piled up in the bed, he's lying there fast asleep. He gets so mad he pulls his hair, swears and declares that he won't stay there. And the man that wrote that home sweet home ever yeah, was a married man. He never had that loving wife, sweet as a frying pan. To meet him at the door as the ghost come in, black his eye with a rolling pin. And the man that wrote that home sweet home ever yeah, was a married man. And a man comes in from his work at night, tired and he goes to bed. Children lying there squalling, crying like a great dead. He walks and walks for about one hour, every hand with every power. And the man that wrote that home sweet home never was a married man. He never had that loving wife to greet him with a frying pan. To meet him at the door as he goes come in, curl his hair with a rolling pin. And the man that wrote that home sweet home never was a married man. Wife, to greet him 
with a frying pan. To meet him at the door, let's go come in. Break his back with a rolling pin. And the man that wrote that home sweet home never would have married his man. Damn, sure wasn't mad. The man that wrote Home Sweet Home never was a married man. I've got that on an old 78 record. I know they had it on an LP and couldn't couldn't locate it, and I was looking for uh, the whole title. Well, they've got it on there. Never was a married man. They shortened it down just a little bit, so uh, now I can remember where that's at the next time I want to play it. Here's Webb Harris over here, the old wandering boy, and the title song from the 1952 LP called Wandering. Wandering, wandering, who's tipping you?
Dick Hurt and Saldy Holmes and all the boys from Tex Atchison and roll it on there, sure enough. This is Gail and Bruno with a few more ideas from Bruno Pharmacy for graduation gift giving. Amity leather billfolds for men and ladies, jewelry, watches, and jewelry boxes. We'll hope you'll make Bruno Pharmacy your graduation gift giver's place. If you're interested in a secure future, consider a career with Tyson Foods. Come to their job fair and find out about all their benefits. Saturday, May 19th from 9 till 2. See their ad in the Moonet Shopper and join the Tyson team, an equal opportunity employee. Rainy Super Supermarket offers you rodeo all meat jumbo hot dogs. Buy one pound package, get another absolutely free. Also, poached, fried, scrambled, grade A, medium eggs, only 29 cents a dozen limit, two with a $10 purchase. And here it comes again, your favorite wholesome banquet meat pies. Beef, turkey, or chicken, seven ounce size, buy for a box. Banana lovers, look, gold premium, gold ripe bananas, four pounds, just a dollar. You get it all at Rainy's convenience, service, and most of all, sacks and sacks of savings at Rainy's. Check it out. Yeah, sure enough. Here's Gene Autry over here. The West, the Nest, and you. The West, the Nest, and you, dear. Oh, what a dream A cozy little party. And who 
Slowpoke Air, written by Pee Wee King and Red Stewart, and uh, sung by a whole bunch of people. And now, live from Cassinger Stradling, here's Don Sullivan. And that song, though many people don't know it, was actually written about me. Uh, I've been called that most of my life, Slowpoke. But anyhow, we are glad to be out here and on the fast track at Kessner Spradling Motor Company here in Monette today. They've been having their uh, heart... Well, we lose him again for some reason. I don't know what the deal is. Uh, a problem there somewhere. Don will have to call me back. I don't know what uh, what happens there with him. Anyway, he's gone again. Shake the hand, shake the hand, and you're John Deere dealer. He's the man with the brand America rides with pride. It's Deere season. The season to save at your John Deere dealers. Deer season customer discounts go all the way up to $350 on John Deere lawn and garden tractors. Rather have a walk-behind mower? A John Deere Silver walk-behind is what you want. This is the mower so good that your John Deere dealer guarantees you'll like it for your money back. For larger jobs, check out the savings up to $125 on John Deere riding mowers or the $100 customer discount on John Deere's great new SPX Suburban Lawn Tractor. Meet these and all the great Deere season savings today when you meet your full-service John Deere dealer. Shake the hand, shake the hand, you John Deere dealer. See the full line of John Deere products at Shane Equipment Company in Monette. If you're thinking of trading cars, don't buy till you check out the fantastic selection of quality new and used cars during the tent show at Kessner Spradling Motors. This is Joe Spradling from Kessner Spradling Motors, where we take the hassle out of buying a car. Come by and let our friendly, helpful sales and finance people put you behind the wheel of a new car. The savings will never be better. Come out for free refreshments and register for a trip for two to sunny Mexico. It's all happening this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at Kessner Spradling Motors Highway 60 in Monet. All right. Well, Don, he may not know that uh, I lost him there. Uh, I'm going to let Roy and, and uh, Lonnie over here. Lonnie Robinson and uh, Roy McGeorge, I guess it was. They're going to do The Prisoner's Dream.
Junior's dream there, sure enough. Uh, Roy McGeorge and uh, Lonnie Robinson for that uh, particular recording there. That's a good one. KRMO. Yeah, now let's try Don Sullivan again and see if we can keep him on. I'm going to play the 12th to never here and dedicate it to you. Are you going to do it by Willie? No, Slim Whitman. <laughs> okay. I appreciate it, bud. All righty, the 12th to never for Mr. Slim Whitman. Twelfth of Never there, my doggies. Hey, we ain't got time for just a little bit of Forky Deer with Tommy Jackson. Hey, I've had an enjoyable time today with you all out there. And I hope you have, and uh, maybe wherever you go to evening, you won't get wet.